Wagwan people, it's your boy Mo, and last night was the NBA draft. You know, it's that time of year. Well, it's not that time of year, because it was. it's meant to be in June, but obviously Corona and that, so now we're in November. Do you know it's the night where we see the stars of tomorrow and all those other cliches, or it's the night where we see someone get drafted and then turn into a complete bust and be the butt of jokes on Twitter forever and ever. So it's gonna go one of two ways. It's all mad, right? It's all, all mad. The NBA draft has been the most unique because teams haven't had the usual combine, the usual chance to scout them. They didn't see the March Madness tournament. We didn't see, we didn't see a bunch of things. So this is a pretty unique draft class. So I'm here to break down the top 10 picks and react or, what's the word? I'm gonna be giving out grades, coming like one teacher. Coming like I'm a teacher in a, in a classroom. I'm gonna give grades uh, for each team and how they drafted based on the player they drafted, the other players available, the fit for their current roster, what I expected them to do, and just a few other factors. I'm just giving you some of my thoughts on what these players could turn into in the NBA. So make sure you show some love in the comments and the likes, drop a thumbs up, because then I can do more of these videos. I can do the next 10 players, the second round, do everything and show you the guys that you're sleeping on that you haven't noticed that aren't big names. But in the meantime, press subscribe right now. I'll give you a second to do it. Before I break down to you, the top 10 players in this year's NBA draft and my thoughts on the teams that picked them. All right, you're subscribed now, cool, let's get into it. How long have the Timberwolves been rebuilding? I'm 26 years old. The last time the Timberwolves were really good that I remember was when Kevin Garnett was there in 2003, 2004. Bro, I was 10 years old at the time. I'm now a grown ass man. So in Minnesota, it's time to get your stuff together and let's get it cooking. All right, but they didn't trade the pick. Maybe no one offered them a Super Bowl package, so I can't be too mad at that. They picked Anthony Edwards. Now, Anthony Edwards, for me, is the best scorer in the draft. We're going to see him come into the league and be almost like Dwayne Wade, but not quite. Someone more like Donovan Mitchell, I reckon. But the thing with Anthony Edwards is, in college, he didn't shoot a great percentage. He was taking a lot of bad shots. Now, here's why I think it will help him being in Minnesota. Because Carl Anthony Towns is the number one option, and D'Angelo Russell was the number two option, he's simply not gonna have the ball enough to take all of those bad shots. He's gonna have to refine his shot selection. So for me, I think it's a good pick, it's a good fit, because they've already got a guard, they've already got a big, so now they picked a wing player. It positionally, it fits well. You know, in terms of what they're trying to do, he's got bucket loads of talent. My area of concern is the interview that came out where the kid was saying, Man, I'd play in the NFL if they offered me a contract. I'd stop playing basketball today. I only started playing because so I learned I could dunk. For me, when I heard that, I was like, this is a big L for whichever, whichever team drafts him. We could be seeing like a... Remember how good OJ Mayo was when he was coming out of college and how, you know, he was a huge prospect and look at where he is now. So I'm, I don't know. Hopefully that doesn't happen. I don't think it will happen, but it could. Um, you know, I, I would really like to draft someone to my franchise who loves the game of basketball if their job is to play professional basketball, it would just make sense. At number two, the Golden State Warriors were expected to trade their pick. Instead, they selected James Wiseman. Now, the news of Klay Thompson's injury came out just moments before the draft started, so I don't know how much that factored into their decision-making process. I feel like, you know, if Klay was playing this season, apparently it's a serious Achilles injury, he might be out for another year, but if he was playing, you should be trying to trade that number two pick and Andrew Wiggins' contract for a piece that can come in and help you win a championship because the whole reason you got Andrew Wiggins' contract is not because you like Andrew Wiggins. You wanted to flip that and the draft pick because the draft pick had significant value, that's why he tanked it. Instead, they've said, all right, cool, let's, let's play both sides. Clay can be out for another year, but we'll keep Steph, we'll keep Draymond, but we'll take James Wiseman, who's a big man, and I think at his very worst is gonna be, the worst case scenario for me is he turns into DeAndre Jordan. And DeAndre Jordan was like the third option on Lob City Clippers, which were a good team. So the worst case is DeAndre Jordan. For me, if he can get a three-point shot going, he's shown flashes of it before. If he can get a bit more physical when he's inside and really utilize that 7-1 size, 7-9 wingspan or something crazy, then he can be a real force. The area where he's going to be most exposed in the league is in pick-and-roll defense. He only played three games in college, and his pick-and-roll defense was terrible at best. Now, he's going to be playing alongside Draymond Green, former defensive player of the year. So Draymond can teach him a thing or two. He can play a drop coverage, and hopefully Draymond can cover for some of his mistakes. But team's going to be looking to put Steph and Wiseman into those 1-5 pick-and-rolls and trying to expose both of those guys. But overall, overall, I like the pick. They picked arguably the best player available at that time, and it fits the position in which they needed to fill. And they're also thinking on two timelines now. They're thinking, all right, cool, if Clay don't return, don't worry, we're still building for the future now. We're not going all in. We're not putting all our chips in. 
So I like that one from Golden State. Not quite light years ahead, but I like what you did. Now, James Wiseman went to the Warriors, but at number three, the Charlotte Hornets, who wanted to pick James Wiseman so badly, they went for LaMelo Ball. Now, this was a surprise to a lot of people because they've already got Devontae Graham and they've already got uh, Terry Rozier, who signed there last season. He signed a big contract. People were expecting Charlotte to maybe package up something to try and just move one spot ahead to the Warriors pick so that they could take Wiseman or something to that nature. But instead, Michael Jordan, we know he has so much input on these draft selections for Charlotte that haven't worked out in the past, but I'm feeling good about this one. He's a big fan of Lamelo Ball. You know, Michael Jordan himself was drafted third as well. And also shout out to the Ball brothers. Shout out to LeVar. Everyone thought he was nuts. Two of his kids, the first brothers to be both picked in the top five of an NBA draft. Shout out to LeVar, my G. But let's talk about this fit. Let's talk about this fit. First of all, Terry Rozier, get out of here, man. Uh, second of all, Devontae Graham and LaMelo Ball defensively might be the worst backcourt I've ever seen. Having said that, LaMelo Ball is six foot seven. He has potential to develop. He's also very young. He was actually moved up a grade by his dad so that he could play with his brothers in high school. He should be getting drafted next year. So I'm not, I'm not completely dismissing this. In terms of what he brings on the offensive side, for me, if LaMelo Ball can play up to his potential of what his ceiling is, in 10 years' time, he could be the best player to come out of this draft. He's got the most superstar potential of anyone. I see him as kind of like a, a six foot seven Trey Young, but his shot mechanics are nowhere near Trey's. He does need to solidify those. But the passing, the passing skills that he has, unbelievable. If there was a way that you could have got Wiseman or Obi Toppin on the same team as Lamelo Ball, the alley oops you'd be seeing for the next 15 years, disgusting. But even still, I do like the pick. For the Charlotte Hornets, who usually have terrible draft picks, you know, my whole philosophy on drafting is always pick the best player, not just one to fit your team. I know the Timberwolves went, this one was tricky because there were kind of three guys that were the clear-cut best players. But, you know, last year, say the Pelicans had said, we've got Anthony Davis, we don't need a power forward, and they didn't draft Zion, big L. Never draft for the fit, always draft for the talent. Now, on the Sky Sports Heat Check, my other show on Sky Sports, uh, BJ Armstrong, three-time NBA champion. We were, we were talking about the sleepers and who we expect to kind of, you know, go under the radar a little bit and break out when they start playing in the league. And one name he had really high up on his draft board was Patrick Williams. And obviously BJ, who played for the Bulls, worked in the Bulls front office, he must have heard some whispers because the Bulls at number four surprised a lot of people and picked Patrick Williams. Now, the reason that they picked him, for me, I think is because of his character. They're really trying to build a culture at the Bulls organization. They don't really have a culture going. He's a high character guy. GMs love him. He is, you know, the kind of guy you can make into the face of your franchise. Now, he's a gritty player. He hustles hard when he's on the court. Like, on the defensive end, he may not be the best man-to-man -man defender out there, but he does hustle hard, and you've got to give him credit for that. And on the offensive end, he does the things, you know, off-ball movement. He cuts to the basket when no one's looking. He goes back door. You know, he's a great role man. He's got great size in that wing position. He needs to develop as a spot-up shooter, but I like the pick. I think a lot of people would have picked many Denny Abdiya or a few of the other guys that were on the board, but I do like this pick. My grade was quite low for this one, but after talking to BJ and some of the other people around the NBA and hearing their perspective, I'm going to have to trust the experts, but I'm still not fully sold because his jump shot does need some work, as I said. And number five, the Cleveland Cavaliers, the land, LeBron's old kingdom. They have not found a LeBron replacement, but they have found Isaac Okoro, who I think is a very solid pick. At number five, the Cleveland Cavaliers have picked Isaac Okoro. No, they didn't find a replacement for LeBron James, so the land of Cleveland. Still goes without King. I mean, Andre Drummond opted into his contract, but I don't think they're trying to keep him long term. Anyway, they've got a bunch of young players. They've picked a small forward here who's great at getting to the bucket, finishing through contact, and he's a great defender. Man-to-man, -man, on the ball defender, he can lock people down. Interesting to me, considering they've already got Kevin Porter Jr. For the Cavs, it, it wasn't what I would have done with a pick. Um, you know, I would have picked like a young big man to pair with, you know, the young guys, Garland, Sexton, that they've got there. But I like what he brings. He's going to turn into a solid role player if he can get his jump shot going. For me, his shot mechanics are just not there. And it's not just his three-point shooting, it's his free throw shooting as well. Uh, I think that needs a lot of work. Now, at the number six pick, this one was surprising to me because this is a team, the Atlanta Hawks, who have just traded for Clint Capella. They've got John Collins, who for me is one of the most underrated young stars in the league, 20 and 10 walking. He's nice. He's nice with it. Check out my interview with him on my channel if you haven't seen that yet. But they've gone and picked Onyeka Okongwu, who, if you're looking for an NBA comparison, I guess the best guy to compare him to would be a Bam Adebayo in a few years' time when he develops. What you are going to hear is some people saying he's the best big man in the draft. And you're going to think, hold on, what about James Wiseman? Here's the thing with Okongwu. He's an excellent pick-and-roll defender, a big weakness of 
James Wiseman, and he's also great at protecting the rim. He can finish nicely on the pick roll on the offensive end, and this is the reason why I wanted him on the Boston Celtics. I was saying, Danny Ainge, I beg you, my brother, trade up so we can get him. We didn't get him. The Hawks have got him now. That leads me to believe that John Collins may be on the move elsewhere. I've heard rumours that they can't really come to a contract agreement. So, John Collins may be on the move. That's one to keep an eye on. But Trey Young and Okongwu together, man, we're going to be seeing some highlight pick and rolls for the coming years. That's going to be fun. I'm going to give the Atlanta Hawks, because it's not a great fit, but I do love the talent that they've got. And now it makes them, you know, it, it means they have more options in terms of moving John Collins. You know, you could possibly work on some sort of sign and trade in the future to get another piece in a uh, wing position. Who knows? Now, at the number seven spot, the Detroit Pistons picked a player who I expected them to pick. They've been covering him for a long time. In my opinion, he's the best European player in this draft. I watched him first when I was... My first ever event that I hosted was the Jordan Brand Classic. And he was actually playing there. It was the top 50 players in Europe that came to the camp. And he was balling out there. And you could tell even then, I think he was 16 at the time, he was going to be a star because he just had different talent. I was talking to Ray Allen. Yeah, I'm dropping the names. I'm, I'm feeling myself today. I'm dropping it. Yeah, I, was, I was chatting to Ray Allen. We were watching the kid. We were talking about his game. And even Ray was impressed. So when you've got the best shooter of all time, sorry, Steph, the best shooter of all time impressed with you, then you're on the path to stardom. And the Detroit Pistons have got a point guard now to pair with the other Frenchman on their roster, Sikun Neboya. They're great friends. So that's interesting for me. That's interesting for me and how they develop together. I really like what he brings. He's got a very Harden-esque Harden S game. He's got that left hand that he can wet it down with. He's got that step back in his bag, which is one of the most popular scoring moves in the NBA now. So, you know, I'm, I'm intrigued to see how he happens. They say he's not athletic enough. They said that about Luca too, so I'm not too concerned about that. He's still a young guy, so I've got, I've got no, no doubt that, you know, as he gets stronger and he works with the NBA trainers, he's going to get more and more athletic, and that's really going to help his game. On the offensive side of things, I'm not worried. The, the main area for me on his defense is it's not even so much being a bad defender, it's just communicating, man. You've just got to be louder. you just got to communicate more with your teammates. And obviously, having your fellow Frenchman on the team now, you're going to feel a lot more comfortable, a lot more at home from day one since you joined the Pistons. And now you two are both getting acclimatized to life in the NBA together. That's a nice little experience. So I think it's going to be a good fit. My guy Kevin O'Connor had Killian Hayes number one on his draft board. And the fact that you're able to snag him at the seventh pick... Man, this is a good pick for Detroit. Shout out to Detroit. And when it came to the draft last night, I had a moment where my phone blew up. I'm thinking, yo, what's happening? Has someone been traded? Has, has, has Woj retweeted me? Why is my phone going off? Little did I know, it was just loads of people texting me saying, you're on TV right now. I said, no, I'm not. My show was earlier. It was at 10 o'clock. It's midnight now. What are you talking about? And then in came the pictures of Obi Toppin. Now, personally, he looks a little bit like a long lost half brother. I don't think we're twins, that people were saying to me. But... You know, big up him. He's now my favorite player in the draft. You know, skin fade gang and all of that, my brother. Salute. He was picked by the New York Knicks. He's a high flying. Like when I talk about dunks, he's the best dunker in this draft class for me. Like he'll just be on a fast break, throw down a wimble. He'll be on a fast break, go through the legs. Now, Madison Square Garden, the mecca of basketball, fans want to be entertained. So the Knicks have picked a guy who's going to put fans in seats. Not that there was ever missing seats in the Knicks, but you know, he's a showtime player. He's a big showtime player. Stephen A. Smith ain't happy about it. Knicks fans in general aren't really that happy about it. They, they're never happy about anything. But let's be honest, if I was a Knicks fan, I wouldn't be happy about much either. I think this is a solid pick. It's not an amazing pick. Um, some people are saying he could go higher up. I think he was the best player available at this spot in the draft for them. It's going to be interesting to see how he pairs with RJ. The only reason I'm saying I don't like this pick is because he's a power forward. And the Knicks have power forwards and power forwards and power forwards and power forwards. Although a lot of them are on expiring contracts. So we're going to be seeing who they bring back next year. But if they don't, they're going to have to move Julius Randle because I like Obi Toppin and I feel like he has a lot more potential than what he's shown just in the college game. Now with the number nine pick, the Washington Wizards selected Denny Avdia, another player coming out of Europe. And, you know, in the build-up to this draft, I want to address one thing. In the build-up to this draft, a lot of the scouts, the experts, or whatever they want to call themselves, they were lazy. They looked at him, they said, ah, oh, cool, six foot eight, coming out of Europe, Danilo Gallinari. He's not Danilo Gallinari. He's not a great shooter like Danilo Gallinari. But what he does give you is excellent playmaking. He's got a good handle for someone his size, and his passing is on a whole other level. So we could be seeing a guy who can be a point forward, he can operate an offense out of that high post area. I like this pick a lot for the Washington Wizards. A lot of people thought he'd go at four or five, including myself. I thought he'd be taken already by the time he got to this point. So for the Wizards, I don't think they planned on drafting him because I don't think they planned on him being available. 
But you, at the end of the day, you've got to go with the best talent there. And I feel like he has a lot of potential. You know, if he could sort out that shooting stroke, then you could be in some real trouble. I like Rui Hachimura last year. You've still got Bradley Beal if you can convince him to stay. If you can somehow offload John Wall's contract, then Washington might be looking nice, especially in the Eastern Conference. The kid's been playing pro over in his league in his home country for a hot minute now. So he's got a great basketball IQ, not only on offense, but on defense too. Fantastic team defender. He's going to be great at playing that help defense when you need him to. So I think it's a solid pick. Let's keep it rolling with the Phoenix Suns, the number 10 pick, Jalen Smith out of Maryland. A very, very, very surprising pick for me because let's look at the, the players that were still on the board. Still on the board, Devin Vassell, Tyrese Halliburton, Kira Lewis Jr., Aaron Naismith, Cole Anthony. These were all the guys that went after him, even Pogskevsky. So you know what? Here's the thing though. The Phoenix Suns, they've gone all in now. They've got Chris Paul. They're saying we're trying to make the playoffs. We're trying to make the playoffs, and then they're looking at their roster, and Baines is a free agent, and Saric is a free agent. What can both of those guys do? They're big men who can rebound, but also they can space the floor and shoot. So what have the Suns gone and done? They've said, you know what? We're going to draft a guy that can space the floor and shoot, and then use that free agent money to shore up our bench elsewhere, potentially. So I like the logic behind it. It's received a lot of criticism, this pick. They're saying he wasn't the best player available at that time, but... I, I really like what he can bring. I don't personally think he's going to develop into a superstar player or, or an all-star or a star. But what you need is a solid rotation piece. Sometimes you need to go for the guys that you can rely upon and you know what he's going to bring. He can space the floor and he can knock it down. And in the modern NBA, where everything is pace and space, that's what you want. That's what you need. A big man who can shoot the threes. And don't get it twisted, he's, he's not moving like just a guy who's going to stand on the perimeter. He can get it done on the inside too. He can, he can get it done around the basket as well. I, I like what he brings. It'll be interesting to see them giving some minutes off the bench this season because obviously they've got DeAndre Ayton. He's their big man. He's their star big man. They don't need another star there. He's going to be a solid, solid backup. And you know, if he can help DeAndre with his shooting and DeAndre can help him with the rest of the game, the two might form a nice pair in practice going up against each other and we can see some great development. So those are the top 10 picks in the NBA draft. I'm gonna go through now and just recap the grades that I gave them because I think I forgot. The Minnesota Timberwolves, I'm gonna give them, I'm gonna upgrade them. I'm gonna give them an A. They picked the, the most talented scorer in the draft. They picked a player that could fit the need that they had for their team. I can't penalize them for, you know, not trading it because maybe they didn't get any offers and they've picked a player who I think could be helped by playing alongside two guys that score a lot because now he won't be able to take bad shots. Number two, James Wiseman to the Golden State Warriors. Again, they picked a player that they needed and could be argued to be the best player at that time in the draft. You know, the top three guys in the draft were all kind of on the same level. So there was no clear cut runaway, so I can't be mad at that. I also can be a little bit mad that they didn't trade their pick because they've had even longer to trade it because everyone knew the pick would be good because they tanked last season and they had Andrew Wiggins' salary to offload. So for me, it's a disappointment that they didn't trade that pick. So I'm going to give them a B plus because although they should have moved it, Wiseman is still a great player who can come in and contribute now and he can develop for the future and become potentially an all-star one day. So solid pick for the Golden State Warriors. Charlotte Hornets are number three. Michael Jordan picked Lamelo Ball to come and play for his side. I like that a lot. Um, it's better than picking some obscurities like Frank Kaminsky in the past. So I'm going to give them an A. Shout out to MJ. Uh, I was saying on Twitter that... Puma paid 100 million for Lamelo to wear their shoes. Michael Jordan just paid nothing for him to have a Jumpman logo on every jersey that he wears in the NBA. So MJ. Number four, Patrick Williams. Again, a guy I was kind of surprised that went high up, but you know, sources have told me that GMs were really high on him. So I'm gonna give them a B plus and see how he works out. It might be a couple years before we see the true value of that pick there. And number five, the Cleveland Cavaliers with Isaac Okoro. Uh, they can get a B, they can get a B. Minus or a B plus, I guess. It's, it's a tricky one for me because I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the fit, but I know he's a talented guy and I love what he brings on the defensive end. And me personally, I favor great defenders over great scorers because defense wins championships, baby. And number six, the Atlanta Hawks, Onyeka Okongwu. I think this is a solid pick. I'm going to give them an A minus because I know they've got kind of a log jam now with those two big men they already have in Capella and Collins. But now with Collins' future with the franchise uncertain, it gives them some insurance. It gives them a backup plan if Collins does decide to take his talents elsewhere. So solid pick. Trey Young's going to have fun playing with a Kongwu. And I'm still mad the Celtics didn't draft him. 
Number seven, the Detroit Pistons picked the best Euro in the draft, Killian Hayes. And I'm going to give them a A. Why not? I'm going to give them an A. I like how he fits. He's joining his French buddy, Siku Dumboya. And, you know, it's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Killian with that killer left hand. Killian with that killer step back. He's going to be killing guys on the court. I look forward to seeing it. Number eight. The Knicks drafted another power forward, Mr. Obi Toppin. I'm excited to see him on the court because he's a showtime player. He's a big time player. He's going to be playing in the mecca of basketball, Madison Square Garden. He's going to be throwing down those alley oops. He's going to be throwing down those windmills. He's going to be throwing down those through the leg jams. I don't know about defensively. Defensively, he can be very exposed. But you then have Mitchell Robinson anchoring that New York defense at the five spot. So I like what he can bring. I do like what he can bring. Solid pick for New York. I'm going to give you guys a B plus. I'll give you guys a B plus. Number nine, the Washington Wizards picked Denny Abdia. Many people didn't think he'd still be on the board at this time. They thought he'd slide down, so they picked the best player available. He's going to be a great playmaker. Not a great shooter at this point, but he's a great team defender. So he can stay on the court, give you solid minutes, and he just needs to work on that shooting stroke. And i got no doubt he's going to be in the gym, grinding on it, grinding on it, and he's going to be good. So I'm going to give the Washington Wizards uh, A- minus for this one. Oh, I'll give them an A. Why not? Why not? Feeling nice. I just can't give them too much praise because of the contract they gave to John Wall. That's an that's a automatic L for them. And at number 10, the Phoenix Suns, Jalen Smith, who not many people expected to be there uh, that high up on the draft and not many people expected Phoenix to take him, but they are probably going to lose the GOAT, Aaron Baines. So they need a big man that can replace him and Jalen Smith can come in, space the floor and shoot at that five position, which is so valuable in the modern NBA. I like this pick more than a lot of other people. And so I'm going to give them a minus. I'm quite generous with the grades. I think everyone had kind of a good draft night. There was no picks I looked at, and I thought, that's a terrible pick. But there were a few, but they came later on in the draft. So we'll talk about that another time. But those are my grades for the top 10 picks in the 2020 NBA draft. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Who do you think should have been the number one pick? Or do you think everyone kind of had a good time? Make sure you subscribed, as I'll be back telling you guys more about the steals of the NBA draft because there were some guys even late in that second round. It was 6 a.m. here in the UK and I was seeing guys go with the late, late second round picks. I'm thinking, rah, how did he drop all the way down there? So stay tuned, stay subscribed, and in the meantime, my people, get buckets. <laughs>